Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today we're heading back to the American Civil War for another game of Sharp Practice. Alright, so giving the ACW another try here in Sharp Practice, and today we're going to see the 14th Infantry battling the Stonewall Brigade here in Bergville Gap, or the outskirts of Bergville Gap. Um, so anyway, it's going to be a custom mission, so let's get into it. Beginning with terrain, uh, the map we're using tonight is the Grassy Hill map, one of our very first maps and also one of our favorites. Very vibrant, it's just super awesome. Check out the description if you want to get one of these. Gameplay wise, uh, there's going to be a lot of fences, so the fences are all going to be soft cover and minor obstacles. We have a few patches of dense terrain slash woods. We got one here, one there, one there, four inch visibility, soft cover. One small orchard here and the wheat fields are going to be soft cover at all times. Other than that, uh, we have a few buildings. We got a church, we got a barn, we got a water tower. These are all going to be soft cover as well. And that should do it for the terrain. Today's mission is called El Fertivo. And El Fertivo is a spy, a Confederate spy, and he's been gathering intelligence here in Bergville Gap. So the primary objective is for the Confederates to find and secure El Fertivo and take him back to HQ. The mission is roughly based on mission two from the rulebook Sweep the Table. So on top of El Fertivo, who will be using the hidden character rule, which means we will get a piece of paper and I'll put an X on one and I will shuffle them up and I will put them randomly in one of these buildings. Whichever building uh, has the X is well, where El Fertivo is. And if the Confederates find him, he will come out of hiding and go with them back to HQ. If the Union finds him, they're going to have to do a search uh, to locate him in that building. Securing El Fortivo will be worth five points uh, to either side. So um, to secure him, one unit is going to have to leave the board with him. So that's going to be a big deal, but it'll be worth five points. So you will be down a unit, but you also get a bunch of victory points for it. So it's going to be an important choice in the game to decide to take El Fortivo back to HQ or have that unit stick around and continue the fight. Being that it is a sweep the table mission, uh, there are some things on the table that can be secured for, from foraging. So we have some animals. We got a cow here, a cow here, and some attack geese there. And we also have some supplies here and some supplies over there by that tree. So that's going to take a task roll of eight to secure those. Uh, once you do, it's going to be worth two points. There's also another objective that I threw in, and that is the Confederates want to burn down the church. They want to send a message to any um, Union sympathizers in the area that they mean business and that nobody's safe. So if they can get up here and light the church on fire, that'll be worth five points to them. Um, going with that, the Union, if they secure the church and or the barn, they will get five points. So securing means that at the end of the game, they have to have a unit touching it to get the five points. So... We'll see how that goes. Uh, task roll to burn the church down is going to be an uh, 8, I believe. I'm sorry, it's an 11 if the spirit and tenders are bought. If not, it's going to be a task roll of 18 without them. So it's going to be tough to get that church burned down, but it is an option. Deployment-wise, we're pulling that from the scenario sweep the table. So the Stonewall Brigade will be the sweepers. So they will be either deploying their primary deployment point here or there, random. And then they can deploy alternate uh, deployment points after that as, as, as usual. Uh, so they'll come in normal. As soon as the leader's cards come in, they will um, start deploying. The Union, meanwhile, are coming from their camp, which is further away from Bergville Gap. So they're going to be delayed. They will also be coming in randomly from one of these uh, areas here. But they have to roll a total of 14 task roll when their leader's card comes out to even start deploying. So the... Rebels are going to get a, a head start on them, and the Union will be, will be showing up eventually, but uh, it'll be well after the uh, Confederates have probably already taken most of Bergville Gap here. So it's a points game. Uh, the five points for El Fertivo, the five points for the barn or the uh, church, and then the two points for all, any of the objectives that get swept up um, in the uh, foraging. And that goes for both. I don't know if I said that, but the Union and the Confederates can both go for the uh, foraging objectives. And I think that's pretty much it for the mission. Let's take a look at the forces. Beginning with the 14th Infantry. 
So I do not know what points on these at all. Uh, I just eyeball them and both horses are identical. The only difference is uh, some of the special rules. So the Union, uh, they're going to be commanded by Major Barry Hume. He's going to be a level 2 leader in charge of two groups of line. And these are uh, Surly, armed with rifled muskets. And we're also going to be given the flags uh, for free in this game, just because I like the way they look. And then we're going to have another uh, formation of two line troops. Uh, these guys are going to be commanded by Captain Phil Dent. And he is a level 2 leader and our newest uh, Old Guard patron, so thank you to Phil for that. Moving on, we got two groups of Union Skirmishers. These guys have sharp practice, rifled muskets, and the first one's going to be commanded by uh, Lieutenant Will Bossman, and the second one's going to be commanded by Lieutenant Reese Dignan. We have one light cannon, commanded by Lieutenant Tyson McInnes, and it's just a light cannon. They have really uh, no special rules. And then we're going to have the cavalry. So this cavalry is going to be commanded by Lieutenant Wallace. They're dragoons. And they are going to be coming in if the player decides to spend four flags on them. And we will be starting with flags in hand in this game again. So there's a chance you might see the uh, cavalry on turn one. Or maybe not. So we'll see. But uh, anyway, that's the Union Force. And the Stonewall Brigade. So the exact same force composition as the Union. But the Stonewall Brigade here is going to be commanded by Major Dan Klain. He's going to be a level 2 leader, flags again for free, and he's going to be commanding two groups of uh, conscripts and volunteer rebel militia, I mean rebel line troops I should say, and they have rebel yell. Next up we have Captain Fred Stevens, he's a level 2 leader in charge of the uh, same exact uh, two group formation. Two groups of rebel skirmishers. Uh, they have sharp practice. Uh, the first one is going to be commanded by, who is this? Ah, Lieutenant Barksdale, level one, and Lieutenant Joshua Bruder, level one as well. Rebel light cannon, same as the other uh, light cannon, is going to be commanded by uh, Lieutenant Cody Neal. And then the uh, Rebel cavalry will be commanded by Captain G.P. Stewart. He's a level one leader. They have Tally Ho, Sam Colt's equalizer, which is essentially tomahawks. Uh, mixed weapons and they are dragoons. So mixed weapon means if they dismount they can only fire at half effect because half of them have shotguns, some of them have muskets. So limited firepower but they are uh, better in the uh, charge. So that'll do it for the rebels and I believe we're ready to get started. Okay, Andre's arrived. He's going to take on the take over the Stonewall Brigade. I'm going to be the 14th Infantry. And we've done our force morale. I'm at 10, Andre's at 9. I've also done our hidden character thing, so I put a piece of paper with one, uh, an X on it, secretly or randomly in one of these three buildings. And force support wise, we're both bringing an exploring officer, we're both bringing a musician, and I am bringing. What was my last thing, Andre? Oh, holy man. Yeah, holy man. And instead of holy man, Andre's bringing a uh, spirit and tinder. So no holy man. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't need a holy man when you're going to burn the church down. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I guess no holy man makes sense. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, um, special or house rule for musket ranges. We're going to get, everyone's going to get one volley at full range. After that, we're going to drop it down to 36 inch range for the rifled muskets. Uh, just game balance wise, we've had a lot of games ACW related that. Uh, just turn into super long range firefights. No one can move, no one can do anything. Uh, so we'll just say the smoke accumulation on the battlefield is gonna make everyone's range drop a little bit. So that's the rationale for that. And I think we're ready to get started. Okay, we're ready to start. Uh, flags are in hand. We are not gonna allow the uh, four flags to be played immediately to bring in the cab though. That'll only be after we put them in the deck. So go ahead, Andre. Okay, blue leader four. That's not going to do anything for me. I can't do anything until the big man's card comes out. It should be faster with fewer cards in the deck. There it is. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. And I got a yeah, six. Six. Okay. So you got to get to what? Fourteen. Uh, okay. That uh, that works. That works. Number okay. two. Okay, that's Fred Stevens. That's your second group, uh, second line formation. Fred Stevens has deployed from the Rebel primary deployment point in column there, ready to go over the fence. Remember, you get an extra three inch distance for having the exploring officer. So, next card. 
Oh, that's oh, the my. big man. It's Major Dan. Major Dan has come in off the secondary uh, deployment point there in the road, nine inches. So he's right in the middle of the crossroads there. And they're ready to uh, start marching. So next card, Andre. Oh. He's out of position. I'm out of position. <laughs> Can't do anything with that. So we ignore every card I have, pretty much. Red four, that's uh, Josh Bruder's skirmishers. Bruder has deployed there to the right of Major Dan, uh, 15 inches from the deployment point. Next card. Ah. Perfect. And saved Travis from... Uh, yes, I didn't need to you, see... You needed... Uh, yeah, I needed that. You needed that four cards earlier. <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. So move on to the next turn. Start of the next turn. Come on, big man. Nope, no big man. <laughs> Tiffin. Okay. We'll move well, on to the next turn. <laughs> you do like seeing it early, but uh, now big man Tiffin would have been that would have ideal. been ideal, perfect. But it didn't happen. So move on to the next turn. <laughs> Flip the Tiffin on to the bottom, and we're ready to go. <laughs> Blue or red four, that's Bruder again, so he's already on the board. It's right there. Andre's moved tactically with Bruder. 3d6, a four inch move. Woohoo! He was trying to get up. I don't know where he was trying to go. Were you trying to get to those supplies or? Um, actually, I was heading towards the uh, water tower, but I guess I could uh, hit the uh, supplies too on the way. Oh, well, next card. Five, that's Cody Neal, that's the cannon. Cody Neal and his cannon have deployed an extra three inches uh, because of the exploring officer. So he's up there next to Major Dan. So next card. Oh, that's a Tiffin. I... That's a harsh one. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. That's Fred Stevens. Fred Stevens made it over the fence in column. He's up to the barn. So the next turn he'll be able to peek in the barn. See if Elfer Tebow's in there. Six, that's your uh, GP Stewart. Oh, I guess we could pull the sixes out because we're not using them yet. Ugh. After this turn, we'll pull the blue six out too. Five, that's Cody Neal. That's your cannon who's kind of stuck right uh, now. He'll present. Okay. <laughs> present right at the church. <laughs> <laughs> Next card. I guess I should have lined up. Uh, actually, yeah, you can spend a turn lining up at least. He's in position. Are you looking over here? Yeah, I'm just kind of aiming off. Uh, okay. Next card. Although I'm thinking I should probably. Yeah, yeah, that works. Can't do anything with that. Can't do anything with that. Uh, the big man, Major Dan. Major Dan and his boys just advanced up in column. Got a nine inch move. Next card. I need that Look blue at that. one. You got three, I got three. I need the blue one. You got four. <laughs> three, that's Bruder. I'm sorry, that's Barksdale. That's your other skirmish unit. So Barksdale has come in, uh, 15 inch deployment means he got all the way up to that cow and he started the process of wrangling the cow, he got a rope around its neck. He only got a 6 though, so he needs an 8 to, to get the cow. He's almost there. Got a 1 in 4 chance of come getting on. the big man. No. Okay, Just, we got a 1 in 3 <laughs> chance of getting the big man. Come on big man. No, it's not the big man. Okay. It's Bruder. That's uh, these guys uh, back here, slow movers. Bruder has used his free move. He got to the supplies and he rolled above an eight. So he has secured the supplies and earned himself two points. Okay. Would you Come believe on. it's a 50-50 chance? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it did it. It's the big man. All right, what wow. I have six. Six plus uh, seven. seven. You're at 13. Oh, man. You need 14? <laughs> I need 14. <laughs> that sucks. Well, I'll for sure get it next time. All right, moving on to the next turn, right? Yep. Mm, yep. Come on, big man. <laughs> nope. It's blue. Oh! Oh, it is the big man. Woohoo! So he will obviously make the one roll. So now everything can start coming in. Now, we do You're have not going to roll it? 
Okay, fine. I'll roll it. I'll even just use Don't one. Screw D this up. One d six, just because. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so we did. Andre agreed to do a general. His his suggestion, but he's not bringing any flags in. Well, he can now, but he wasn't going to bring any flags in to muddle the deck. Um, until Travis made his. Until uh, I got to fourteen. His roll. Yeah. So now we can start using flags. Okay. So I could do a sharp practice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you could Actually, reload on I top could, of your other one. I could do a rebel yell. <laughs> you could. 3d6 in movement. Ah, uh, the cannon. So that's... Hmm. hmm that's McKinnis and the, my cannon. Hmm. <laughs> targets. There are targets. Let me think about it. Okay, I brought the cannon out. McKinnis and his Irish cannon crew have deployed from that deployment point. So the 10-pound parrot gun... Firing at Lieutenant or Major Dan's formation. I'm needing anything but here. Uh, first fire, one present, and they're in column. So ten shots. All ten hit. hits. Ten hits. So that's five each, Andre. Okay. So do the front group. Okay. Let's just roll them in here. Front's green. Ah! So front's green, so that's a dead, two dead, two shock. The back is going to be three shock and a dead. So check Major Dan, because on a one, it could be him. It's not Major Dan. Okay, we'll sort it out. Okay, that was so good. So I can use three flags to activate a unit? Yes. Or four flags. If you wanted to, you could activate Lieutenant Dan with the four flags right now. And then when his red one comes out, go again. Probably a good plan. Okay. Major Dan pulled the shock and he's swung around the corner and open column, planning to do a left face and get on line. And he did pull a shock. So he made it up 11 inches. Five. Oh, it's your cannon. Damn it. Yeah, Cody Neal. You didn't want the cannon? No. Why? I don't. Do I have a shot? Don't you have a shot on my cannon? Am I in the way? Check it out. So Cody Neal's cannon moves a little. It's a little too close to this back group here. If they got another inch up, they could have probably fired. But we stayed in uh, in column. Give us <laughs> give us a screen, a skirmish screen. Ah. Two. Uh, that's Phil Dent. So that's my Irish brigade. Uh, Captain Dent has come in uh, nine inches from our deployment point over here. And we do have Major Dan uh, on anything but. First fire, column, one present. I get one present. And he, he will get soft cover, Andre, I think, just because I'm shooting through so much wheat field here. And I think I have to spread it to Barksdale because he is in range with this first 48 inch volley. Well, isn't our criterion, I have to be closer to it than you? Oh, the cover? Uh, well, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. I could just stand up and fire over the top of it. Um, okay, so no, no cover for Andre. So Major Dan will be in light in the open, but Barksdale back there will be in hard cover. So anything but. Pull the butts. So that was 18 shots with three butts. So that's 15 hits. Okay. He's right, already ready with the dice somehow. All right. How are these going to be distributed? Okay. Uh, yellow, green, blue. So yellow front, green back, blue Barksdale. Ah. Okay. So we'll the front. sort it out. Okay. Well, that was a pretty effective volley by Dent and the Irish. So we did uh, three shock on this front group, two dead and a shock on this back group. So they're up to five shock, they're up to three shock and down three guys. And then one shock went on to Barksdale and they are unloaded. So next, uh, the, the Tiffin has come out. I didn't get a chance to bring any of my cards in. Oh darn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay. Next turn, I need to get some cards in the deck here. Hey! Hey, look at that. A red flag. Oh, nice. 
blue five. That's McKinnis. That's my cannon. He's going to reload. Okay. Oh, man. Well, you can do something, Andre. You got a flag. Yeah. I guess you're going to have to try to move an inch up <laughs> so they can get clear of your cannon. Well, or... I was going to say, would I be clear if I snapped in? Probably. Well, or I mean, how? technically the end would still be there. It would just be facing that way. So, it'd probably be the same. Yeah, but that guy could be back here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll let Andre figure it out. Major Dan, he's broken his formation up. So he had the front group of the five shock go into the woods, so they're facing the wrong way. And then Major Dan joined the other group. They moved up to the church. And they're going to start preparing to burn. Uh, the spy may be in there. Um, so he's going to have to try to see if he's in there. Like call out through the window. Hey, uh, El Fertivo, you in there? We're going to burn this down. Uh, Everybody out. <laughs> yeah, if you want to live, get out. So that's it for that turn. Okay, here we go. Next turn. Hey, it's my cannon. <laughs> Why so, do I keep putting that on top? I don't know, but my cannon is lined up with your cannon. So I guess I'll just take a shot at your cannon. Woohoo! All right, McKinnis' light cannon is going to fire over at uh, Cody Neal's light cannon. And I can do a controlled volley every turn. So I will present the gun and fire some needing fours. One, two, three, four, five hits. Totally average. Uh, they are in hard cover back there, but the cannonball will reduce it to soft cover. So, wow. so we got two dead and a shock. Check your leader. Uh, Tim, it's Neil. He's knocked out. Okay, well, one guy dead, and then Neil is knocked out. And there's two shock, I think. Woohoo! Good job there for Tyson and his cannon. He's unloaded again. Ah, the big man. Oh, now my big man can come in. Where the hell does he even want to come in? Let me think about it. Uh, Major Barry Hume and the boys have deployed. Uh, thanks to the exploring officer, I was able to get uh, nine inches away from the deployment point. So right in front of the cannon. Uh, I'm going to have to try to get out of its way, but it's done a lot. Um, but I wanted to get as close to the church as I could. So what we're going to do is we're going to waste our first fire just firing half of our formation. These guys can see Barksdale. So that'll be um, threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. And you will be in hard cover. Come on, get a kill. Two kills. Well, yeah. And no That's shock. It. All right, check your leader. It could be Barksdale. Of course. It's not Barksdale. You have to roll under, right? What? Don't you have to roll under the number oh. of kills? Um... Oh no. Yes. Or now I don't we play this game a million times. So <laughs> we'll come we'll figure it out. Barksdale's down two men and he's got one shock. And I'm half unloaded half the formation's unloaded. And we move on. So uh am I gonna start getting some cards here? Cause uh No. I'm getting hammered. Oh, hold on here. Before you bring I want I'm gonna use <laughs> I'm gonna, use three. Remembered. I'm gonna use three flags to bring someone in, I think. Just to get some flags in the deck. So what do I got left? I got my two skirmish units. Bossman deploy on my right, uh, the 15 inch distance from the deployment point uh, on the edge of the wheat field there. And we are going to take a shot over here at Steven's boys who are in column by the barn. So why are they still in column? Needing threes, because it's long range, plus one for mean light infant or uh, skirmishers plus one for column plus one for first fire so threes okay that's uh, five hits so split them up split them up hey you got two groups there I do yeah okay green uh, green in front so it's just a point of shock each Okay, and then we'll reload. Can I use my free action to try to rescue the or rescue the cow here? Your movement action? 
Well, I got three actions. Yeah. Yeah. Can I do that? Uh, or I'll stay unloaded then. How about I'll stay unloaded and try and get the cow? Okay. I was going to say, that movement action is a movement action. We got the cow. Uh, but we are unloaded. All right. So that's Bossman. Uh, next card. Man, Andre's having a tough time here. Hey, that's that was Bossman. Okay, well, his card came out right after I spent the three cards. Full right. shock. Uh, yeah. No, oh, there we go. Dignan. So my other skirmishers. Oh, come hang in. on, hang on. Oh, there was a. Whoops. Two cards stuck together, folks. Red flag. Okay. <laughs> Burn a card. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now it's Dignan. All right, Dignan's deployed um, on my left flank. This uh, exploring officer's coming in very handy for me, or for both of us, really, today. But he always does. So these guys are going to fire at the guys back there. Uh, look like they're about to try to set fire to the church. So Dignan's boys are going to have uh, threes. No, it was twos for the green and threes for the blue. So all green hit and one blue hit. So that's five hits on your group there in the open. Maybe this will be a quick game. I don't know. I'm looking like it. A so dead in a shock. Dead in a shock. So check your leader because these are skirmishers. It's not him. So another dead in a shock. Um, okay, so he's up to four shock. Four guys with the two flag guys count. So six shock, or four shock with what equates to six guys. Oh, it's what? the cannon. Hey, your cannon could fire. What? Uh, wait, no. Your guy's knocked out. I'm sorry. You're going to have to use a flag to fire the cannon. But... Um, yeah, so if you want to use Neil now, you'll have to burn a flag. Oh, no. See if he gets up. He does not get up. Okay, he's not going to use a flag yet. Oh. He's going for the fourth flag. Oh, that's uh, Barksdale. That's these guys. Hey. Barksdale has used all of his actions to move over the fence. But like Andre said, at least he's blocking the cannon. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Bruder. That's those guys over there. So they were going to finish securing those supplies. And that would be their whole... Oh, that would be one action. You still have an action and a move, a free move left. Bruder has uh, secured the supplies. So that's two more points for Andre. And then he's advanced up and almost reached the water tower to see if Elfer Tebow's there hiding somewhere in the water tower. I think tower. I'm going to start referring to all my lieutenants as Mr. Dumas here pretty <laughs> soon. Ugh. That's my Irishman. Okay. In the end, I've just decided to move the Irish up. Uh, they're going to be uncontrolled. They're controlled because they had first fire control volley. But after that, it's uncontrolled and with no musician. Conscripts. Could be tough. Hey, it's Fred Stevens over by the barn. Hey. Hey, he, can, he hasn't he done can anything. He can do something after he came in. Finally. Actually, I guess he did jump over the fence, didn't he? Yeah, he did one thing. He came in and then did one thing. Is it the spy? It is. Elfer I Tebow. can see it from here. Is there an X on it? You don't see the X? Oh, yeah. It is Elfertivo. Okay, well, now you got to decide what you're going to do, Andre. That's five points if you get him off the board. But your unit would have to go with him. Oh, no. They wouldn't be able to <laughs> stay over here and uh, <laughs> plink away. Okay. Okay, well, he's found L for Tebow. All right. Okay, so uh, about face. Yeah, might as well. March. So, uh. Well, I here to use one action to find L for Tebow. So you only get. You can't go over the fence. It I, takes two even actions. Even if I take a uh, uh, point of shock? No. You can't, you can't sprint over fences anyway. So basically, all you can do is turn around. But you can do that. <laughs> I can turn around. I wouldn't even do that because you might get shot in the ass. You can go down the fence. Well, there's really nothing to do except get El for Tebow. You can snap in. You can snap him in. Get him out of column at least. That'd be something. Yeah, because then you can just move back. 
because I mean turning around doesn't take any no you get a free turn anyway all right so we'll find an L4 Tivo model how about that guy right there with the barrel there he is what are you guys <laughs> waiting for <laughs> let's go <laughs> all right here we go uh, so Andre is definitely gonna be ahead on points on me I gotta stop that barn from getting burned down that's my only hope another red flag Unfortunately, I already burned one, so I can't double up. But my big man hasn't uh, come out yet. Nope. Can I activate um, the big man, or can I do a task roll on a after flag? No. No, it's got to be before flag. So you could activate the big man now with those three flags if you think the tiffin's going to come out. Uh, I can't do it with two flags. I guess you could do it with two flags. Or does it take an off? If it takes an officer's order, then it would take three. three. Yeah, that would make sense. How badly do I need? Well, we are going to say that I can get up to and try to put the fire out. So if he sets it on fire, if I get up there, then I have to get a task roll eighteen to put it out. Um. Here we go. He's gonna. So he burned the three flags. He's gonna activate Major Dan. He's gonna try to get on fire. Need an eleven. That's not an eleven. Nope. So the spirits have been poured. The matches are out. The tinder is being placed, but not quite there yet. Really? That's Wallace. He's not. Uh. Oh. Great. Oh, oh my God. I don't even get to luck. pull shock. The worst of luck. But you did at least get the fire <laughs> beginning to get started. So we'll come back for the next turn. Next turn. No caveat on the board. I still got a flag off the board. That's my big man. What the hell? What the hell am I even going to do with him? I'm going to move up and start urinating on the jerks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Whip him out. <laughs> we'll stop the fire. All right, let me think about what I'm going to do here. <laughs> Major Hume, he reloaded the one group, and then with the last action, they moved up a D6. I got a six, so I did a little bit of wheeling you know, just to get straight, and then I moved up to the church. I also had uh, Major Hume uh, ordered McKinnis to reload the cannon. Next card. It's a red flag. Four. That's Dignan, who's over there. I had Dignan move up. I uh, used two actions to move. I only got a three inch move. I'm just trying to get up to the fence, but he moved up three inches. Uh, they're going to fire and be unloaded, and we're going to fire at. Who the hell is that? Bruder. Joshua Bruder. Uh, needing fours. One, two, three, four, five hits. Five hits. I'm rolling well. Okay. Hard cover. We'll split them up. A dead. Huh? Check and see if it's Bruder. It's not Bruder. It was close though. All right, uh, next card. That's Cody Neal. That's your cannon, Andre. Oh, hey, Barksdale is luckily right in front of him. <laughs> um, I can pull a shock. Oh wait, he's knocked out. He's still not going to try and get uh, up. He does I not can get fail. Up. Okay. All right then. Next card. Hey, look at that. It's Major Dan, who okay. did not come out last turn. Okay, well, <laughs> Andre completed setting the building on fire, so the church is now aflame. And there were some chickens there, and he grabbed them as well and threw, threw them in his bag. So he's gotten five points, seven points just now. Seven, eight, nine. He's already 11 points. Plus, he'll have five more when this guy gets off the board. So maybe the points need to be adjusted a little bit. <laughs> but really, it's you just got lucky to have the spy way over there. Yeah, that was, that was uh, luck. Okay, that was next card. Helpful. Three. That's Bossman. That's these guys. Decided to go after points. I got to start closing the gap with points. So Bossman has rushed out with all three of his actions. We've reached the supplies. So next card. That's McKinnis and the cannon. Okay. 
<laughs> Bossman is, uh, no, I'm sorry. McKinnis just, uh, he had no, I was too close to fire past these guys. So he just kind of moved over a little bit, got a better line of sight down. So the next card. Man. Blues are just fast and furious here. That's two, two flags in a row. That's Barksdale. So Barksdale's here in the middle of the road. Barksdale, Barksdale's charging. Or he attempted to charge Bossman. He didn't make it. He got close though. And and uh, Bossman is unloaded. We did a rebel yell, but like <laughs> <laughs> he choked. <laughs> okay, that's my Irishman. They're unloaded. Phil Dent. Uh, just, they had his men reload, and then they wheeled two inches. So originally they were arc of these guys, but now they're facing that way. Next card. Red leader four. That's Bruder. Bruder is just going to stand and fire at the big man's group, uh, needing threes with six shots. Aim for the guy on the horse. One, five hits. Five hits. Can I use five of your dice, please? I'm not sure I want to use these tabletop general's dice. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go uh, wrong? So I guess they all, got, they all got to go on that group, right? Yep. That could, oh. that's, that's what could go wrong. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm never using these dice to roll for saves ever again. I, I thought I learned that last game. All right. It's the leader. He's knocked out. So they knocked out. Oh, my God. Okay, these dice are going. They're only for shooting. <laughs> and then a shock. And then two more guys dead. All right. And a shock. And you're unloaded. And you still have... Or you can reload. Uh... Yeah, fire, reload, and two shock, right? Two yeah, fives? I think so, yeah. So two shock, a wounded leader, two guys dead. <laughs> it's a hell of a shot by Bruder. Yep. Uh, so you're just going to stay there? Yeah. Okay. We're so in hard cover. Next card. Now i got to get my guy to get up. All right. Come on, baby. Yeah! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs> so he's got four flags. You gonna bring your cavalry in? Do assault. GP yeah, Stewart. Yeah, oh yeah, you could do the assault. You could finish the assault. Oh. Andre's thinking about what to do. I'm gonna roll my bad thing for Hume getting knocked out. So these guys are surly, which means if I get a one, I gotta re-roll it. <laughs> Tabletop generals dice. You got a six. You bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> has uh, burned the four flags. He's brought G.P. Stewart in. 15 inch deployment for the Dragoons uh, off of that uh, secondary deployment point. He's right in the road there. So his card is now in the deck. Tiffin! Tiffin! <laughs> it is the Tiffin. Do I have anything that hasn't gone? No. I can't get that last card in the deck anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, it's a, when you bring when you activate everything every turn, it makes it hard to bring that last card in. <laughs> yep. Okay. And that means you can't do anything with the two flags. Nope. Yeah, everything's gone. So move on to the next turn. Here we go, Andre. Okay. All right. I need Bossman. I need Bossman. No, that's not Bossman. That's not Bossman either. But that is Phil Denton, is Irish. I'm going to have Dent. Uh, I'm within 24 of both of these groups and in arc of only those two. So I will be hitting on fives. So we're just going to stay put and blast away even fives. I did use some tabletop generals dice. I see it got me another six. Seven. Seven hits. Seven hits will be four on one and three on the other, so I guess we'll let you pick. Uh, we'll do the four on the uh, guys, at least we're facing the dudes wrong way. that are facing the wrong way. So a dead and four shock. So you don't have to check your leader. So it'll be four because it's because you're facing backwards. Yeah, but that's a that's a shock. Yeah, and, and you had a four, right? That's a shock. Oh. Oh, oh that's all, hard cover. You rolled them all at once. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. So the four was on that group, the three on this group. So nothing on these guys. Nothing on these guys. Dead and two, dead and two shock. Okay. Care about them? So they fell back uh, one inch, involuntary withdrawal. Nothing on the bad thing. I'm down to eight, though, because 
the tabletop generals dice screwed me <laughs> again. Um, I think that's it for those guys, and they're going to reload. And that's it. So they're going to be uncontrolled. 5A, it's uh, Cody Neal, your cannon. Hey! Hey, at least you have the cavalry in front of you this time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see if he gets up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nope. Hey! Oh, it's a five or a six? It's a five or a six, yeah. Oh. Which, I'm definitely going to roll a tabletop general's dice for that roll. That's Fred Stevens. That's the guys with uh, El Furtivo. That's Stevens and his guys uh, made it over the fence. I got the spy with them. They're heading towards HQ. Next, next card. Okay. Have me one of the tabletop generals dice. <laughs> <laughs> These always roll high, so I need a five or a six. <sighs> <laughs> so close. All right, I think they're out to get me. <laughs> it's uh, just equalizing for the card draws. That one roll really screwed me over. Two flags for Andre. I'm like, should I activate the? Uh... the squad over here actually uh, you're skirmishers so you could just skedaddle out of the way couldn't you I could but you could catch me hey uh, major Dan so he's over here with four shock um, let's see what he does GP Stewart canter he cantered up 15 inches, so he's got right to the church. Next card. Hey, it's McKinnis with the cannon. What do you know? We're lined right up on you. Hey. <laughs> At least you're in the open. That's always a bonus. McKinnis is loading the canister shell. We're going to fire at GP Stewart. Uh, we're going to present, and we're in close range, so needing threes. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. And. There you go. Yeah, the steward needs to be up there with his boys. So six hits. Uh, okay. Good, good and two shock. Four shock. Dead and four shock. Yeah, it's a canister. Dead and four shock there. Next card. Uh, hey, it's GP Stewart. Wait, how did he? Oh, he went with these, huh? No. He went off of the leader. Oh. So actually, I still had one more. Uh, oh, I gotcha. Yeah, so you didn't do all your stuff. Okay. So he has one more thing to do with the big man. Uh, the other command, Andre just had what's left of his group to fall back. They're going back to the uh, primary deployment point. Damn, another flag. You get four flags again. Come on. Oh. <laughs> what's with you and the flag stacking? <laughs> That's twice now. Right, he burned his four flags, and he's chased Bossman off the objective. He abated. Stewart came over, and that's how it looks now. That's four. Bruder. That's those guys over there. He's going to have Bruder fire at these boys again, uh, needing fours. Tabletop General's dice. I'm seeing a lot two of whiffs. Hits. Maybe two dead. Kill the leader. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Uh, point of shock. Wow. Which is a lot since I my leader's down. Yeah, well. <laughs> and he already tried to get up. Three. Hey, that's Bossman. Perfect, that's these guys. I was supposed to get the next die. That's, I think you've gotten enough cards this turn already, Andre. Actually, it's time for a blue card. Did those guys already go? I don't think so. That would have really sucked for you if I'd have gotten their card. Yeah, that's uh, Barksdale. Yeah, I don't see getting him. He's blast not... blasted in the butt. Uh, oh, yeah, facing. Yeah. Okay. Reloaded Bossman. Move the D6 up, and I'm gonna fire into the flank of the cavalry. Needing fours. <laughs> Two hits. Uh, wow. Well, as long as I get a couple shock here. One shock. Well, two, two shock. shock. So he's up to six shock now. Yeah. With no holy man. I got a holy man, which I don't really even have hardly any shock. I got three shock on the board. 
but I'd much rather bring in that uh, physic. Well, I've shot at you twice. <laughs> yeah, I literally fired two, your, your two one, volleys. Your from first one shot game. of the game took out my leader. <laughs> <laughs> that was fortuitous. Hey, look at that, a blue dice, or a blue card. Oh, I was going to maybe do something with my other card. But I can still bring... I was going to say... Uh, I can still do something, right? You're, you haven't activated everybody, have you? Who do I got left? A four. So just a four. Just Dignan? Just the my skirmishers so over there. So you can activate them. Yeah, okay. I could activate Which? these guys too. They haven't done anything, so I could start trying to put the fire out at least. I could bring that one in to do them. Because their leader didn't get up, but they can still activate. And then I can have Dignan do something. All right, post Tiffin. I got all my flags in the deck now. Dignan just advanced over the fence. And then I had the big man's group just wheeled back a little bit. Try to get some guns pointed in the right direction. Oh, perfect. The big man's getting up. Yes. Watch your body get knocked out again. <laughs> Everybody reloads, Everybody right? Everybody reloads. Which is just you. Hey, what good stuff happened for me? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> so, the end of chapter, we'll move on to the next chapter. First card. Hey, what do you know? Another red flag. Six. Oh, that's your, uh, that's GP Stewart. That's the cavalry. So, with the six shock, Andre is not able to move Stewart, but he did reface him at least. So, they're pointing back that way now. So at least it's a different flank shot. Or now it's a rear shot. At least you're facing the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's my Irish under Phil Dent. Dent's just going to have his boys fire straight ahead at the that group there. And over there at Bruder. Uh, and even fours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13? Damn. Even, even fours. Five misses. Yep. Wow. Splitting up. So seven on these guys. So six here. It's a dead. Just a dead. And seven on the other dudes. Soft cover. That's four more shock. Four shock. You're facing the wrong so way. So eleven shock. With how many guys? Um, six. Six guys. Ah, oh, almost. One more shock, they're going to break. So that's... The dreaded second Eleven, pile. so that's a five-inch Oh, yeah. <laughs> five-inch involved. Yeah, that's going to get them out of... Uh, that's going to actually save their ass. Well, I was planning on that last turn, but... Of course, they have no leader, so they're going to have to, well, Major Dan's right here. He could probably... I could combine my... You could get back together. <laughs> get over hook here. Hook them up. Hook them up. <laughs> all right. So that's all that is, and then uh, they'll reload, since they're uncontrolled anyway. Five. That's the cannon. We might finally have what? a shot here. <laughs> finally. Where did everybody go? <laughs> so we did find the one good thing that happened at the chapter end was we forgot that... Cody Neal was knocked out. He got up. I did have uh, a benefit. So he's going to fire over at McKinnis's cannon. Uh, first fire, right? So yep. I think needing threes, I think. Yeah, because you're fives, fours for present. Threes. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits. That's pretty good. That's respectable. So I'll be in soft cover. Damn. <laughs> so that's two shock and three dead. It's not the leader, though, somehow. Damn, that was a hell of a... You haven't fired a lot, Andre, but every single shot you've taken has been pretty badass. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you haven't missed anything on the shooting. But that doesn't... I mean, that does... Even though I took you down to half strength, that doesn't do anything for... for no, me. not really. So he'll be unloaded. All right, next card. Blue flag. I need four flags, not you. If you get th four flags for the third time in a row. We need the Tiffin. <laughs> oh, that's Major Dan, who's over here. 
Okay. Major Dan ordered Barksdale. So Barksdale moved up. He's searched. He's trying to secure those that objective. He only rolled uh, snake eyes though. And then Dan just moved uh, his group over just a few inches. Four inches. Next card. Five. That's uh, McKinnis. He's loaded, right? But he's got a bunch of shock on him. Is there any reason not to fire? I mean, oh man. I should pull a shock and fire. Because if he gets one more shock, he's going to start involuntary withdrawing. Of course, where's that shock going to come from? I guess your cannon. Fire another one. Mm. So you're down one dude, and your leader's backed up. I'm down three dudes with three shock. That was a hell of a shot. Yeah. Damn. Uh, if I burn the flag, drop him, get him down to two, or does it even matter? Save the flag. Yeah, I'll save the flag. So I guess we'll just fire at your cannon. Straight ahead, uh, presenting and firing the cannon at the other cannon. Eating fours. One, two, th three hits. Man. I suppose I'm unloaded. My cannon's unloaded, isn't it? Yep, so is mine. So three hits, soft cover. Three hits. Yep. Come on, do some damage. Ah, dead and two shock, alright. We'll take that. Card. Oh man, look at that. Two of them. Three of them. That's three flags in a row. Yeah. Uh, we forgot. Uh, he did move. Did I mention that? On the last three flags in a row, they got an extra D6 of movement. Um, three flags in a row. So it's your cannon fired last. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Let's see what happens here. Oh boy. Three. That can't be good. <laughs> and he's got a foul barrel. <laughs> Perfect. Three. That's uh, it's Bossman. That's these guys. Perfect. I'm just going to have Bossman. He's going to stand his ground. We're going to fire at Barksdale and reload. Uh, I need fours. One, two, three, four hits. Soft cover on Barksdale in the open. Dead and two shock. Check your leader. It's not him. So a dead. They don't have any shock. They do now. <laughs> okay, next card. Two, that's uh, Stevens. He's the one running off the board. We're just going over the mission. So the mission as written, which the mission we're using is number two from the book. It says at the end of the game, roll a d6. If you roll less than the number of objectives secured, you win. So he's already secured three supplies. He's got the spy, and he's burned the church down. I will say my chance to burn the church ended when the chapter ended. We are supposed to roll to see how long it took to burn down, so that would be how long I had to uh, put it out, but it, my big man got knocked out, so they just stood there like morons and looked at it and watched <laughs> it burn. <laughs> burn, baby, burn! Well, we are supposed to protect the church, weren't we, sir? Oh, we protected out. it. It's burning down without <laughs> any hindrance. So... Pretty much, I can't win at this point, point-wise. I could try to drop his force morale to zero, but I don't see how that's going to happen. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. And with that, we're going to end the game. I can't possibly catch up. I mean, Andre's got, what, 10, 16 points? I got two. <laughs> so there's no way I can possibly drop his force morale to zero from nine well i mean i guess maybe if we kept playing forever but it's, you can just get these guys off the board you can get them off the board the cannon can go those guys those skirmishes there could haul ass yeah it uh it would just be how much uh you could put lead in my butt as i was running away from you yeah i guess if i caused everyone to break and you rolled really bad on all your bad things maybe um, yeah but pretty much the game came down to Bruder knocking out Hume, that eliminated any chance I had to put the fire out. Because we said that it had to be an order from an officer to either set the fire or put it out. So that means that they could, they just stood there, watched it burn. 
And then finally when the chapter ended and Hume got up, it was too late. It was already destroyed. So 18, when I say 18, <laughs> 18 to 2. Yeah. I'm thinking the points probably could stand some adjustment on this. Um, it could use some tweaking in this scenario. Well, it it was also kind of... We got lucky. You got damn lucky with a lot of shit. You got the, first of all, the spy being was, in here. Yeah. That's five. And then me getting knocked out. So if the spy was in there... I probably would have won. I think the game is a, was a lot closer than it looked. Um, the difference was I just kind of went all out. Um, I mean, I really didn't think I had much of a chance after turn, you know, four or five. It was like, uh, it could still happen, but um, it didn't take a huge imagination to just see my main line just being completely obliterated, the church not getting set on fire, you just, you know, coming up, you know, I didn't have good position, I wasn't shooting at you. Nope. Um, <laughs> when every shot you did take, took somebody out. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, what, I fired maybe six times fired the, the entire game? I think you fired the cannon once, you fired think those guys once, Bruder. I fired, twice, maybe the twice. cannon fired once, they these fired guys twice. fired twice. I think that might be it. Did Barksdale ever fire? Um, I don't know if he ever fired a shot either. I don't think he did. So, yeah. I mean, really, it came down to... it was. This was definitely a luck game. If the spy was in here and I didn't get knocked out, he wouldn't have got... Ten, that would have been 10 points less that you had. But you still could have won on the, uh, on the supplies. Yeah. But grabbing the supplies wasn't... You know, that wasn't a, a freebie either. I mean, you've no. got to move up to them. Yeah. Then you've got to spend a turn, you know. Um, I spent a lot of time out in the open just getting blasted. You know, well, how many casualties did I take? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, and then you take two guys from the cannon crew. Plus a That's... leader knocked out. Oh, I'm I'm looking at the board. I forgot most of those guys just ran off on <laughs> yeah, their own. They went back. I to thought HQ. those were all casualties. Yeah. Um, so you did not. Yeah, you didn't. You took a lot of casualties. I only took well. I took two two line casualties and then three in the cannon. So really, and then I barely. I didn't take hardly any shock or any casualties. But points wise, I lost the game. Well, and it, you know, that's the thing about kind of going all with one strategy of, you know, I wasn't trying to lay down covering fire and supporting fire as I moved in. Um, I just moved all the way up and it really almost burned me because when you came in, you were just there in my face and I was getting obliterated. Yep, but I, you stuck to the objective. Well, I played the objective. I, you know, I mean, splitting your main line that's never a good idea, right? <laughs> Not normally, no. But it, you know, it allowed case. me to shed the group with the more shock and get the, you know, move those guys up and actually uh, get the church on fire. So yep. it was... And then knocking out my leader so I couldn't put the fire out didn't help. That was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I actually called that, didn't I? <laughs> I told them to shoot at the guy on the horse yeah, and they, they did. They did. They certainly did. And I was going to try to get that, the geese, but... No, yeah, they never well, came, card never came back. You out. almost got almost got that too. But um, so really, I think it was just uh, the pull of the cards and the dice that won it for Andre because well, it could have turned out very differently just if that piece of paper was over there. Yeah, or I, even in there, it might have. I think it's just it's a. I think it was a lot closer game than you're making it feel because um, well, I did. I was sweating it for the longest time 18 to 2 is not very close <laughs> well it's yeah in if you're just looking at the you know numbers on the scorecard at the end but in terms of what it took to get there and where i'm at right now i mean i'm totally combat ineffective pretty much yeah i'm I mean, totally no, i am totally and I'm i've got i've got a six cavalry shock. group facing the wrong way with six shock I got three skirmishers just barely hanging on. <laughs> my main line has four guys with four shock. The rest of my main line has 11 shock. Right. My cannon has two dead dudes with four shock. <laughs> yeah. I mean... You are I, ineffective. I, I literally got obliterated, but by focusing, you know, and that's something I'm not usually good at, is focusing <laughs> right. on the objective. 
and I tried to stay focused and it actually works. And I'm like totally combat effective, except for the, the cannon's a little dinged up, but everyone else is pretty but much who in cares about the cannon? I mean, the cannon is just, you know, that's a gravy. Unit. Even this guy's been, doesn't have a single shock or casualty. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, if we were to just, yeah. If this was a straight fight and it, it would be over, probably. Oh, two But more. it wasn't. So Andre was good. He stuck the objectives. The objectives happened to work out well for him, having uh, El Fertibo in the barn so close. But that did pull two of his line units off. That was a lot of firepower. Which is a lot of fire. But that was kind of the whole point of the design was, okay, do you want the points or do you want to have these guys hang around and just blast away? Well, and honestly. Which they could have, at least. Fired a couple of I wasn't sure off. that he was going to run off with them. I thought that it might be this uh, skirmish group here was going to grab the uh, um, the goods over here and then come back and escort the dude off and keep my line troops on the table. But Yeah, yeah, it was, it's a tough call to pull a whole formation off just to escort one dude, but it worked out. I mean, well, that's five points is fully playing to the objectives. Yeah, is is big in you know the way scenario as designed. I might have thought about at least just firing at least one volley at Bossman and then running off, but they they got off and it worked out. So anyway, I was I think overall the scenario is okay. I don't maybe the placement of the supplies could be altered a little bit just to give make them less. I. Th I honestly don't see that this was necessarily unbalanced. I mean, you look at where my units are and what condition they're in right now, and it doesn't take a big stretch to see me <laughs> losing having lost this game. No, yeah, you took a beating for sure. I didn't. I, I, I narrowly pulled this off. It, you know, Point-wise, it doesn't look like it was close, but you look at the condition of the battlefield and... Right. I was on the verge of uh, just getting totally routed. Yeah, and as written, the you know he's supposed to roll a d6 after the end of the game. He's supposed to roll less than the number of objectives, but he had six. There were six, and he got or he he got six, so he can't roll less than that. So auto win there. But if if he only got five, he would have had to roll anything but of a six. Yeah, but I just have to pull his card one more time and not completely choking. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you rolled the double one. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's a good game. I guess overall the scenario is pretty solid. It's a fun one. Um, but yeah, that's it. So thanks to Andre for coming out. Thanks to all the live streamers uh, that were here with us watching. And as usual, check out our social media stuff, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. We have a Discord server as well. Check that out. And we also have a Patreon if you want to join and help the channel out. Maybe get some goodies, get some bonus content. Uh, check that out as well. And with that, let us know what you guys think. And we'll see you next time.